Hello, my name is Michael Avery from Cadence Design Systems and in this video we're going to talk about System Verilog Checkers. Now checkers is a word that's meant in a generic sense to describe some verification code which checks something. That's however not what we mean. Checkers are defined in the language reference manual in System Verilog. Indeed they have their own section. They did not appear in the language reference manual until the 2009 standard and in subsequent standards 2012 and 2017 there have been very important changes in how checkers behave so we'll talk about those towards the end of the video. All checkers really are is a formalization of something called an assertion module i.e. a way of encapsulating verification code for reuse similar to how UVCs are implemented inside of UVM code it's a containerization of verification code. In order to attach these checkers to our design we can use the system Verilog bind statement just as we might be familiar with using it to bind assertion modules to system Verilog code. So this means we can insert the checkers in effect by instancing them inside of any design, including a legacy design, without having to edit that original design. Checkers, of course, because they have a different name, have advantages over a normal assertion module. The first of which is that the tool can recognize that the checker construct has a purpose, which is verification only, i.e. it's not part of the design. And how this can work is by, for example, showing checkers in the hierarchy with a different icon or not showing them at all if designers are only interested in exploring their own design hierarchy without caring about verification code. Other such things are inferring clock context from where they're used which could be an instantiation in procedural code. Note with any kind of module in System Verilog your instantiation is happening at elaboration however with checkers you can instance them as and when you please in procedural code and although checkers almost always do have a port list which is just normal signals just like an assertion module you can have other things like properties events and sequences and so on which do add a lot of complication actually to the code so they're infrequently used if you go to the system Verilog language reference manual this is the 2017 version you'll see that checkers has, has its own section which follows the section for assertions so checkers are a generic thing used for verification code they're not part of SVA uniquely they can be used in other contexts as well and the first thing you might notice from the definition of a checker is oh dear it has no parameters like assertion modules do now although if you don't have parameters that's not a big issue if you do have parameters or you wish to give the effect of having parameters then it can create a lot of complications and unfortunately it can be differences in between versions of the standard as we're going to demonstrate later on in this video so first question is why would we bother having a checker because we could just go and write our verification code our assertions covers cover groups any auxiliary code required to help to write properties inside of our rtl code however it's recommended that you don't put your properties and your auxiliary code inside of RTL code, although that would be perfectly legal and a perfectly reasonable thing to do if that's what you wish. It's recommended you encapsulate all of your verification code inside of what we're calling verification components. So these are just modules with only inputs and inside of there is purely verification code. That's why they're all inputs. We're not driving anything out of here. So this is exactly like a UVC in a UVM test bench. We just have one of these assertion modules defined containing verification code and we bind it to wherever it's needed in the design, including legacy designs. So notice this looks like any other module in our design apart from it has no outputs. So the tool can't really tell and neither can anyone looking at the design to be frank. So what you could do instead is use the checker construct. So in this case all we've done is change the word checker for the word module in different places. And checkers obviously can do some things that modules can't, but in general, most people wouldn't use those. So a module and checker should almost be interchangeable. The good thing about a checker, of course, is the tool can determine that the nature of this module is in order to perform verification. Whereas if you use a module, the tool can't recognize what the intent of the module is. So for example, in Jasper, what will happen with checkers is that they will not appear in the design hierarchy by default because the designers don't like seeing verification instances mixed up with a really complicated hierarchy of a design. Let's take a look at an example in Jasper Gold, how it looks. Here's our design hierarchy, and here we have this checker instance here. So you can notice the I icon next to it. This is uh, shown or not depending upon a TCL setting. So if I just go to help, TCL command help, type checker, and in here I say set show checker on hierarchy this tcl setting controls whether i see that checker in that design hierarchy or not and the default changes over versions the default in this particular version is on so it will show the checker there prior versions may have the default as off if we look at the code in the checker we can see keyword checker there keyword and checker down there and notice this bind statement here this bind statement could literally be anywhere it, it doesn't have to be in the same file as the checker it could literally be anywhere indeed it could be in a file by itself that could be the only line in that file 
And as long as I compile that with all my other code, then the binding occurs. Inside of here is all the things we're expecting to see. Default clocking declaration. There's an always block in here, procedural code. We'll talk about that in a moment. Some properties, assumptions, asserts, there could be covers, other auxiliary code as well. So this will be auxiliary code to help out my uh, assert. So I cannot describe a checker as having parameters because the LRM doesn't specify that. So what you're expected to do instead is determine how wide vectors are, for example, if that's what you would wish the parameter value to demonstrate. So the first thing to notice about these ports here is that they're untyped. There's no definition of their type. They could be typed. I could have put logic, clock, logic, or STN, and, and so on. I could have sized this vector here. So this is actually a vector count well. And what this bind statement will do is it will instance inside of, so just highlight it a moment. So frcn underscore cnt is the name of the design module. FR underscore CNT underscore CHKR is the checker itself. That's the name of the checker module. So that name's coming from there. And the name of the instance here, we doesn't exist anywhere else. We just make this up on this line of code. Is SV underscore checker one. And that's what this instance name is here. That's why it's called that name. And we just map in signals with the same name. In fact, we could do it by association or by you know, name to association or positional association. Now, because we've done that, what we're doing is we're mapping, if we go back to the design a minute, so this, you can see in this design that we're binding this to, this output reg, CNT on store val, is a vector of some size, determined by whatever that parameter says, and we're binding it to it, but this doesn't give any size information. That's the kind of thing we would pass as parameters. So what we have to do instead is use dollar bits. So dollar bits tells me how many bits there are in count val to avoid me having to pass a parameter because I can't because it's not in the LRM. So when I look at this in Jasper, um, if I look at logic my CHK var, if I was just to highlight this, find related info, signal description. This tells me it's an array of indices 15 down to zero, 1D array. So obviously it's getting its size from this dollar, dollar bits here. That's how, that's how I would do that. Now, as far as language compatibility goes, so what you have to be careful of here is, is the different things. So let's firstly take the procedural code. This is an always block. Now, this only works because I've compiled with the 2009 standard. So if I were just to search the message log for analyze, the command to compile the files, I've said minus SV09, meaning I want to use the 2009 standard. If I hadn't have said that, if I had said minus SV12 or minus SV17, that will be a syntax error because if I were to look in the language reference manual, this particular version is 2009. That's the name, the standard. If I go to check the procedures, it tells me that an always procedure may it may contain an always procedural block, and a final and an initial, and gives example. If I go to the 2017 standard, I go to check the procedures. It tells me the following forms are allowed, always comb, always latch, always FF, and not always by itself. If I was wishing to compile this with uh, minus SV12 or minus SV17 for the 2012-2017 standards, I would need to change that to always underscore FF. So that's an incompatibility between 2009 and subsequent versions. Another incompatibility is between 2009 and 2012. So in 2012, 12 onwards I can make this input so I can do this I can define my checker as having directions I cannot do that in the 2009 standard so that'll be a syntax error as well so there's two incompatibilities between standards there in checkers so that's procedural code you have to be careful what form of always you're using depending on which standard and if you'd wish to specify direction you have to make sure that you compile the standard that supports that ie 2012 onwards so as we said in Jasper Gold if you have a checker in your design, then the tool will hide that in the hierarchy by default. Let's see how things behave in the Cadence Simulator, which is called Excelium. So you'll notice these green ticks here. The reason for this, if I click it and send that to the source browser, is that I've made this a checker. So I could have replaced the word checker with module here and end checker with end module. And it will behave exactly the same other than I wouldn't see that green tick. So the green tick indicates it's a checker and that makes it obvious to any reader and the tool itself that this is a verification module, not part of the design. So what we talked about then as a summary is the motivation for having checkers, a way of encapsulating verification code in a way that the tool can recognize is there for verification. Problems we might get between different standard versions how to work around the problem of having no parameters and checkers, and hopefully you'll find this useful. Thank you for listening, and goodbye.